there is no such thing as just one model. We've got model hierarchy. This slide is a little bit complicated, but it's worth to start discussing it from the very beginning. So at the bottom, we've got some real objects, uh, John Smith having his beautiful mobile phone. These are real objects which are not part of a model. We call them like runtime instances. So that's anything which is a real object or something that represents a real object outside of a model. And a model starts above. So we can call it like a M0 level. And what's above, it's our model on different levels. So the first one, which we are going to use, you can see classes, UML class diagrams, representing real objects. Like we can have a person with first name and last name connected to some kind of device or devices having other attributes. And we call it like M1 level, the user model. This is a diagram you can create in UML. And the real objects are instances of these elements, as you can see here. But on the user model level, M1 level, we can create a snapshot which represents instances. And you may be confused because these instances on the right, they represent real-time elements, but they are part of the model. And these are real objects from the real world. If we go up, there is a level M2. We call it meta model. So this is like a model about models. And a meta model in UML specification, it's called abstract syntax. This level is like a recipe of the level M1. So we can specify what kind of connections can be there. We can specify, create UML simplified class diagrams, which describe user model diagrams. So like, for example, this connection is an instance of a meta class association. This element is an instance of a class, of a UML class and so on and so on. So we can specify, okay, this is a property. So level M2 is like a template or a recipe for creating good proper UML diagrams. And the instance specifications are instances of it as well. If this is not enough, there is another level which is called meta meta model, which allows you to create meta models because the UML meta model is just one example of meta models. You can have many. So level M3 allows you to create meta models. Okay, so level M2 is like an instance of level M3 and level M1 is like an instance of level M2 and level M1 represents runtime instances.